sound machine. National Streaming Sports is brought to you in part by BetUs.com, designed for true fans. NFL odds, week one, and futures. College football odds, including Heisman Trophy favorites and playoff odds. NBA odds of division winners and playoffs. Major League Baseball playoff and World Series odds. The National Hockey League Conference playoffs and Stanley Cup odds. And boxing wagers. Betting opportunities include versus the spreads and outright winners. Also, during the game. Use our link on our website, nessp.info, the Bet Us Opportunities webpage, for a 125% bonus on your first three deposits. Must be 21 years old, and remember, bet responsibly. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world. Time to experience the O's on the original sports podcast. Oh shit, the O on the original sports podcast. You gotta love that. Some some kid was in my classroom. They saw me. I was writing something. They said, "Experience the O, how merry day." I said, "Yeah, you know, it's all about the original sports podcast." What was I gonna say? He didn't follow me. Like, yeah. That what do you mean? Like, you got to give him some business cards, hand them John out. You know what I'm saying? Goodness, gotta, yeah. Hey, maybe, fellas. Maybe you just throw some cash our way and sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. It's about them sponsors. Hey, maybe Worley can help us out. Check it out. Tim Worley coming on his show tonight. Tim charted out a six-year NFL career at the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Chicago Bears. He was a first-round draft pick of the Steelers in 89. Flashed his talent. In his rookie year, um, he had 770 yards and five touchdowns that year. Um, he had a pretty prosperous career. He's a legend, though, in Georgia, baby. He's a legend, and we're going to ask him about him and the other top four running backs to come out of Georgia tonight. That was a great come up with there, Shane. Uh, his junior season with the Bulldogs, he ran for 1,216 yards, 17 touchdowns. He was a first-team All-American. UPI's uh, SEC Offensive Player of the Year. Um, also a member of the Florida Georgia Hall of Fame. He now he now is a motivational speaker, and I think we will all understand why when we get Tim on here. But before Tim joins us in just a little bit, let's go ahead and talk some NFL stuff that happened this past week and week two hmm. of this season. I, I want to kick this off with the Tua thing, man. Listen. That guy put his head down, went into DeMar Hamlin. The ironic piece of it is Hamlin got hit right here and was killed on the field. And what's Tua do? He hits a mare, and then he goes, Don, he's doing one of these right here. The guy wants to come back. They, yeah, exactly, Sheen. The guy wants to come back. I just read they're putting him on the IR. He wants to come back and play. Thoughts, fellas? I want to know what you think of that craziness it's hard not to want to and that's all you know that's what you've done probably since this guy was what six five six right and yeah. he's only 26 and like i said that's all he knows but you know, they dangle out 90 million i might have to find another career isn't that what they're gonna say well if he yeah. walks away this year he's guaranteed 93 over the next two years i think uh, I yeah. another career but, but but here's but here's the thing. Here's I yeah, I have a career figuring out ways how to spend that money. Man, give me 90. I'll buy a helicopter with platinum propellers. I'll buy stuff that I don't even need if I had 90 million. But here's the thing, real quick. I expect I understand he's saying now, now I want to come back because he knows he's six, seven weeks away. But fellas, it it now if you gave him wearing a helmet, if you were to give him a monkey bump, he might get a concussion. I don't understand why the Dolphins gave him that money, but I understand why he wants to come back or he's saying it now, but we'll see in six, seven weeks. This is a conversation. Forget about the doctors because we know, I don't care what the doctors tell you, you're going to get more concussions. He needs to speak to his wife and his family and truly consider, yo, taking the money and getting out of Dodge, baby. You know, they were saying it's about Crosby when he was sleeping in the, the black room, the dark, you know, no lights and all that. When he was getting concussed a lot that one year. This is just three and 
two years like this is just not good for this young man. He's only 26 years old. Shane, you love football. You love football. and We, we all do. Would you come back? Would you even consider? Would you even – what would your wife say? How about your daughters? How about your well, how about your dad, your mom? If they're if they're get, if they're gonna give him ninety million, he's already made a bunch of millions, so he get a couple more millions. So what's the purpose of going back? Yeah. That's you heard it here first on OSP. They gave him a bunch of millions. Was how many more millions? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like a lot of millions. <laughs> Yeah. Carry the one. Carry the one. That's a lot of millions. A bunch. A bunch and a lot. Yes. I, I don't yeah. know. I, fellas, I don't I know. Just, I don't know, fellas. I don't know. But I, I really – I have a hard time with it. Like, I have a hard time even knowing he's considering it. I have a hard time knowing that Miami is like, uh, okay, we'll go be a neurologist. Yeah. We're going to put you on the IL. We're going to – what the fuck? This is well, a human being's life. Well, look here's, what Miami here. did to him last year. Real quick, Chops. They – they said, "Oh no, he was fine." They put him out back out the next week after he was like had the crippled crippled uh, look to him. Yeah, here's what I don't get: his back. why he doesn't have his own neurologist. Because if you're going to a doctor that has any affiliation with the Dolphins or the NFL, they can say they can have a third party with that in the third. That doctor works for the NFL. You're going to get clear. You're going to get clear. Because don't forget, if he gets if he doesn't get cleared and they tell him he can no longer play, he's guaranteed his money or something outrageous number. But if he retires, he only gets to 93. It's like only as, you know, like oh, 90 only 99 million. million? Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a lot less a than he would be. Ask your dad if he'd take 93 million. Man. You know, Man. ask your brother Bobby. Ask more lackey. Ask anybody. 93 yeah. million bucks? Shit. He's still going to have problems even if he retires. Oh yeah. Hey. Hey, let, hey, let's get can we go to Caleb, please? Yes, please. Open that door up next. Um I've always been under the I've always my feelings were always that it's so much easier than when like Marino and Montana played because the DBs could hit you, the, the, the linebackers could sack you any way they wanted. You couldn't just run free down the field like it is now. And if this guy can't do it now, yeah, he's he's not it. Sorry. I don't care about, oh, he needs experience or those guys came in as rookies and did their thing. You know what I'm saying? Back then, now he can't hit somebody running wide open freely. He ain't the guy. Hey, listen, we, you and I have been on the same page about this shit since last year. Since last year. And everybody, you know, all these people telling us he's a generational talent. Oh, he doesn't have a great offensive line. Oh, he's this. Oh, he's that. You know what? The Steelers had a piss poor line, and they went ten and seven last year with Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, and Mason Rudolph as quarterbacks, and got into the playoffs. Don't tell me about Caleb Williams because I'll tell you what: Caleb Williams has Keenan Allen, he has DJ Moore, he has Swift in the backfield, he has Kamenet tight end. Don't tell me about him, please. Don't tell but, me. Because about here's him. the thing, though. Here, here's the thing. If they would have done to Troy Aikman, if they would have done to Manny what they're doing to these quarterbacks now in the aspect of Troy Aikman went 0-11 and 500 his second year, they're already sitting first-round picks because of this or cutting them. They're not giving them a chance to even learn the game. And when I say learn the game, learn the difference in the speed, learning, well, we've seen you play two games – and you're, we're saying you're not the guy. But in preseason, you do realize it's all vanilla defenses. And he was playing against a lot of guys who are not on NFL rosters. I'm not a Caleb Williams fan. I am not. But if you were going to cut him or say he's not now the guy you thought he was, I, I didn't think he was regardless. But if you're now saying you don't think or the Bears are saying he's not the guy we thought we were, they're having second thoughts, that's on you. Because you're judging him after two games? That's right. not fair to anybody. That's I think crazy. the way they're doing Bryce Young. I didn't think Bryce Young was all that. But you that entire organization in Carolina is dysfunctional, but they're putting it out on, on that young man. You don't yeah. give these guys a chance to learn yeah. and wonder why they don't succeed. Okay. They don't give well, them a the thing is, hey, they're bringing them good. I'm sorry. 
Bryce Young's not even going to be in the league next year. Or somebody will take a flyer on him and bring him in as a backup or some yeah. shit like that. But you're right, Chops. He was never given a fighting chance. I, you go back. I'll tell you what. Green Bay did it best. Yeah. Green Bay did it best. They had Favre there. They made Aaron Rodgers watch Favre for a couple years. You have to and have those they, quarterbacks, though. You, you can't just – they're expecting – yes, they're bringing these young guys in who were studs in college or did really well in college, maybe not necessarily studs, to be the savior of their franchise who they don't have somebody to mentor them. So that's why they're coming in and they're plummeting because they don't have a Green Bay system. So, well, so y'all, but, but, so y'all don't y'all don't believe that if he can't do it now, he he's not going to be able to do it. The, the guys are running wide open. Stroud was able to do it. Uh, Herbert, her, uh, the guy who Chargers came in and did it. Uh, I think Lamar Jackson came in and did somewhat decent passing the ball. I mean, he, he ain't doing anything. Different organizations, and I say that because the Ravens at least tried to build around Lamar, right? Stroud does have. Stroud has a great coach and a good OC. Can't even okay. say the organization of the Texans is a good organization because the McNairs have ruined that, you know, for a while. However, but when you look at it, Carson Palmer sat, never held a clipboard his entire rookie season. Then he came in and started his second year, but at least he got to watch the game. Now, Manning, he is any Peyton baptism by fire. He went three and 13. Troy Aikman, baptism and about fire, but they gave him a chance to progress. Now, don't forget, Eli came in starting, but he at least had to sit the bench a couple games when they put in your boy Warner. Warner, but guys don't. They're saying we invested all this money in you. Well, I'm not a. I'm not. I'm not all into book learning and X in his nose and you know how you figure things out. But if you put all those means in him, wouldn't it be in your best interest to let him sit for one year, a good year, maybe a year and a half? to learn so you can have him for another 10 years and actually put in work compared to starting him right off the rip. Look at Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold was trash for the last two organizations, but he was able to learn. Now he's in Minnesota, got him playing well, got him. They just beat the 49ers. Look at your boy uh, Mayfield. Nobody, everybody thought he was trash. They, they, we got to get rid of him. We got to get rid of him, but he's been learning as a backup and now look at him. Now I, I don't, I don't think career. anyone here disagrees. I yeah. I wholeheartedly agree with that. But who's Tua going to learn from? Who are these guys – or who who's Caleb going to learn my from? Whole, but let I'm him watch saying, the game. I'm not saying I disagree either. But my thing is he's not even hitting guys with you – know, he's not getting yards. He's not throwing – he's not doing anything. He's, he's – he's, I mean, you know, he's just out there. He's not getting like 200, 300 yards passing. Like that stuff is pretty – in my opinion – those guys make it look easy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just I, I never bought into him. He played for he played for a coach that is notorious for not putting NFL quarterbacks in the league. Okay. Okay. He, that, that that's that's his that's uh Lincoln Riley. Yeah. You know, I, oh, I mean, you gotta, yeah, I mean you gotta understand that. And the one that he has in the league right now that's successful, it took him how many years? For Baker Mayfield to find a place where he now fits in, can lead the offense, is confident about what he's doing. Five, because, six they never, because they never let him sit at all. Baker came in as a starter. Hell, even look I, at your boy Hurst. The best thing never happened to Hurst was going to Oklahoma to improve his run, his passing skills. And he did get to sit behind Carson a little bit. I think you with know? Baker Mayfield, I think he he has just matured a little, just got a little more mature. As, as, as a man, as, as a man. But, but he learned the game. He, he had a chance to learn the game. And I don't think they're going to blame this on Williams. They're going to blame this on Bryce Young. That organization, Phil, and you're right, T-Sizzle. It made, Carson Palmer sat behind John Kitna. Kitna wasn't great, but he can, Kitna can tell you everything. He may not be able to do it, but he can tell you what you're looking for and what needs it. But these yeah. guys aren't getting any of that tutelage. And whatever you say about Green Bay, they got it right whether it was Rodgers, whether it's Love. And now Malik Willis didn't look bad Sunday, fellas. He no, didn't he look bad Sunday, and he's starting to learn a little bit. I'm, I'm, I think you know, teams should learn. You to think they've got to get out of certain systems? Hey, listen to my theory on Justin Fields, fellas, and you tell me if I'm wrong or not. They know what they have with Justin Fields when they got him from Chicago. 
So they doubt him way back. Now this kid is putting very few points on the board, running enough to get first downs, uh, throwing enough to, to make plays, but he's not turning the ball over. And, and Coach Tomlin is telling them, we are not going to open this kid up and let him exercise his athletic ability until he knows how to control that ball and not throw it, not throw picks, not take those sacks. And once Tomlin has a feel for where that kid is and his comfort level, then he'll start opening things up. This is all controlled by him. Now that they know it. he's the starter, because he's going to start again this week, maybe they will. And I hope but so. You're, you're, Here's the thing, though, fellas. You can do that. But if he was able to sit and learn, now he watches the other quarterback make these mistakes in the game, and he's being taught in the film room that entire week. So now he's got San Diego. He's got the Chargers in town this week. He is going to learn to fly because San Diego puts point on, points on the board. You're going to have to pass it. And anything he sees in film study that he does wrong, He's not going to remember come next week because he's back in live action. The game doesn't have a chance to slow down where he can see the other quarterback make these mistakes in film study. And then he says, that should have been his read. That should have been his read. So now when he's in, he can make that. I saw this. That's where I should go. Fellas, he's learning on the fly. I just don't think, and even the great ones, Manning, eh, Aikman, whatever, they had to take their lumps. You know what I mean? They took their lumps, but they, I just, I don't think right. it's fair. To, and I do like, I do, I do. I want to. But also, I think, those, I think those guys were passing well, getting yards. I mean, they yes. might have had like, they might have had 10 touchdowns and 25 intercepts, but they also had three, 4,000 yards passing. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But don't, here's the point. Fellas, I know you guys watched it, but you also saw Fields miss some easy targets oh, yeah. that still bothers me that still bothers me he's still missing easy targets because fellas you got san diego you're gonna have indianapolis teams that can score a little bit you're going to have to open it up some and open it up and you're he's not getting a chance in practice he's gonna have to learn it live and in color whoo it's gonna be rough i'm gonna have to see san diego do something against the steeler defense before i give them credit though because uh, we're, we're down a steeler rabbit hole and we shouldn't be but too now and let's go. Let's go to um, what do you guys think about the zero and two Ravens? I think. Listen, they got I think three more games that they could possibly lose, and their season's going to be over. They go to Dallas this. They're not Dallas. Uh, do they go to Dallas, Dallas. this week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Dallas just had yeah. it handed to them forty to nineteen or forty four to nineteen. You think yeah. Dallas is going to roll over after that? Are you no. kidding me? No. They you have. Know, I, I could see – I easily could see the Ravens losing this week. I'm not saying they're going to, but the Ravens are going on the road against Dallas this week. They crushed Cleveland week one. They got the, they got the Cowboys, Bills, Bengals. They got the Bills at home? Uh, Bills at home, yes. So they might beat the Bills at home. Okay. But I could see them losing two of those three. I, I, you're not gonna you're not gonna hold Cincinnati down long. Jamar's gonna come around. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of potential, Sheen, like you said, for them to drop off and fast and fast. All right, who knows? Hey, let's give a couple of shout outs here. Who knows? Uh, Mr. Parker, Kevin Parker is from from Mar Day. Who we got? No, what's up? What's up, babe? How you doing, my man? Doing well, doing well. That's hey. new. No, you, know hey. that you know my grandfather. Who's that? The Reverend Von Hill. Come on, man. Like this. No, is, is your dad his son was your dad? Yes, Ron. Ron Hill. Big Ron worked in the prison. I know, I know this guy right here too. All right, man, we got it. We got stuff to do now. <laughs> Crazy, tell, hey, real quick. Hey, lay them to this. Tell, hey, tell, tell, them. Good. tell them who married. Good, Rev. Hey, tell them who married. I pastored one of the churches in the city of Pittsburgh for the last 30 years. You know that, Mark. Yeah. One of my members is Marion Parker, a good friend okay. of Tim Worley's. Okay. They're okay. like this. Okay. And I have him on there. 
So he's he's oh, well, watching. Yeah, he's Very nice. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Kevin Parker, who should play basketball? Kevin Parker to play basketball? Yes. I can't. No answer in a minute. You used to be the basketball player too, didn't you? We're gonna if, find out here in a minute. I know his, my dad. Him? So my dad and his dad were friends. You got that right. There you go. He's on. He I'm wants to dad, say something. Appreciate you, Mr. Parker. Thank you for joining us. And then when hey, he hey, comes up, we'll tell him type in his question and we'll get it on. Okay. They know go. each other. Yep, they know each other. He had a trial with the Steelers. Yes, that's him. Yep, yeah, that's him. You know, you know Ron Hill, Ron Hill. Remember, Ron, that's his son on doing this. Yes, that's him. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. That's <laughs> right. Yep. They used to live in Wilkinsburg, Ron Hill. Yeah. Hey, Poop, I'll be, hey, Poop, I'll be around collecting for those papers. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, baby, well, that's Terry. That's Terry Young. That's Terry. Yes. That's yeah. my paper boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Terry, how you doing? Well, what's up, Pip? How you doing? Remember you deliver my papers. Yeah, and I'd stop for like a little break, about a half hour, 45 minutes, and then you kick me out. You're like, go, get out of here. Go deliver them papers. I've been hanging out <laughs> talking to the This is wild. I got Marday on there. I got Hill on there. Well, I got my paper boy on there. Oh. <laughs> I just stopped to see Big Mike, you know? Hey, Rev, yeah. my condolences on your father. Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, I lost my father, as you know, man. It was rough. But uh, yeah. he lived a long proof for like 95 years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, That's you know, we thank God for that. Absolutely. Hey, I don't want to hold you guys up. I'm going to get out the way. But you guys got me excited now. I'm jumping. <laughs> it was good seeing you. I can't believe this. I know all, everyone. Terry, my paper boy. <laughs> yeah. Was he a good paper boy? Yeah, he was pretty good. Terry's a good kid. He was a good one. <laughs> I brought it up and put it in the hooks. I didn't just chuck it, you know? That's right, bang. And then Marday, I just saw your sister yesterday. She was at the church with me. Nice. And heal. Wow. Well, we go back <laughs> then your dad, like two old rocking chairs. Yeah, he, he told me. Hey, so I want to oh, say hi to all you guys. God me. bless you. Doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Sure all you. right. Get hey, my Rob. man Marion. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, yeah, all right, Terry, Matthew, you know, and I, and I, I didn't know, see, I didn't know you knew him. Yes, I didn't sir. know Terry was his paper boy. I mean, we all grew up together, but I didn't know Terry was his uh -huh. paper boy. Yes. Uh, you know, Vandergrift, where was that? He had to come up. He had to come check it out. Oh, fellas, we got some. We got a boy, Scott Veselecki. Remember Veselecki's more from yeah. baseball back in the day? Wow. Yeah. I grew up with his brother. I had yeah. his yeah. lucky, the math teacher. Their sons. That was oh. my guy. He that was my guy. Mr. Veselecki was my guy. He was tough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, hey, yeah. Let me ask you um, this. Go ahead. Let, let, let's go back to where we were before Tim joins us. He should be joining us shortly because okay. Tops, you hit him up. You told him 715, right? Yeah, 715, 720. So he should be on momentarily. Okay. Hey. Shane, going back to the to the Ravens, I think there's a slew of teams that are kind of in trouble this year coming out of the gates at 0 2. You don't go much further than 0 and 2, 0 and 3, and, and get back in the hunt in the NFL. You just don't. That's not the way the league is. That's yeah. not the way the league is. Especially because because right now, a lot of those games right there, those are like still, you know, yeah. exhibition yeah. games, uh uh preseason yeah. games, because a lot of those dudes didn't play. But once you start feeling the groove. If you're not rebounding, you are in trouble. So what you think about uh, a lot of the underdogs won this week. So do you think the Vikings are real? Do you think the Saints are real? And do you guys feel better now about that Falcon win that we had last, uh, the first week? Like, you know what I mean? They beat the Eagles last night. I don't know how real the Eagles are. Okay. Uh, but I, I think it was a good win by the Falcons. Right, because, right, right, right. Um, I don't know how healthy – uh, Cousins totally is. I don't think the Vikings are for real, but I definitely think the Saints are. Their defense just stymied the heck out of Dallas. Right, and right. Now, only 19 points. Now, here's the thing. That, to me, the, the Vikings win was impressive because it was against uh -huh. San Fran. you got to give them their props. To me, that, yeah. that one was impressive. I think the Saints are the real deal. I really do. Because 
Dallas was riding high, and that was in home in Dallas. Dallas. They put the ad in Dallas. Yeah, I was that was San Fran though had they had McCaffrey out, Debo went out, uh they had some big big name guys out, even though Brock threw for like what three something. Um I, I agree it was a big loss for, for San or a big win for Minnesota over San Fran, but I just think I don't think that they're like as real as they want to be. Uh I think Sam, I think the Saints definitely are. I think it's going to be an interesting season. I really do. I think you'll see some people win, winning some. I think you'll see some people winning who shouldn't win, and some people losing that were very heavy on, you know, picked to win. I, I, like, you know, like the Bengals are zero two. The Patriots beat them last week, and I, you know, didn't think that the Patriots were going to beat the Bengals, but now. The Bengals and Ravens are both 0-2, sitting at the bottom of the division. And it's the, the someone sent that clip out. It's completely flip-flop. North, the AFC North is completely flip-flop. Um, so the parody of that is really interesting. I, yeah. I, was, I was shocked the Cardinals handled the Rams the way they did. They didn't handle them. They, they destroyed Marvin them. Harrison Jr. had over 100 yards and two touchdowns the first quarter. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and what, let's, let's mention the Bucks and the Lions. What about that one? I, I didn't see that one coming. No, me neither. I'm and that was in saying. Detroit, right? That was in Detroit. Yes. Yeah, yeah you know uh, what? Baker Mayfield, uh, Sam Darnold, uh, are we seeing these guys finally ripen into something that they were always projected to be as number one picks? Is, is, that, is, that, is that what it's taking? Well, to go back on what Chop said, you know, I think with Darnold, he has now he has talent around him in a better, uh, a better, um, you know, a he better team. Confident. Yeah, you know I mean, better confident. front office. Because I mean, you figure straight like Mayfield. Mayfield started in Cleveland, then where he went to like several teams the next year. It was just it he was went just, to L.A. Yeah, yeah, he's been on a lot of teams, and now he's finally found a home, and you know, they gave they gave him big money. You know I think I mean? their defense. I think their defense is stepping up too. I mean, he only had 180 yards. A touchdown. Yeah, but it's, the Lions. Touchdown. it's the Lions. I mean, right. You know what I mean? What uh, I'm saying is, Bucks defense stepped up. Okay, and then I got a question for y'all. Who is the Who is the worst of the high paid quarterbacks? <laughs> Trevor Lawrence. Honestly, I don't see. Yes, there it is, Trevor Lawrence. Honestly, I don't see. A but I don't see a difference between Trevor Lawrence or Tua. Remember when Tua was it two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Tua caught a lot. Of, no, not Tua, but he came out and said Brian Flores was mean to him. Brian Flores would tell him, "You don't belong here. You're not any good." So Soft. On, this, that, and this. <laughs> fellas, he didn't really lie. Tua right. wasn't that good. You know, we nobody was thinking when you thought of Miami Dolphins. Nobody was thinking Tua. You know what I mean? So, but. I don't, I don't believe he's worth the money they paid him. I didn't think Lawrence was. And now we already went through this. Not one of the top 10 guys paid quarterbacks has a Super Bowl. What are we paying you for? Wins, Super Bowls, rings. That's what the NFL is about, but that's we not talked what's about this. It's all about money. So, so yeah. I would be willing to guess that the vast majority of these organizations don't really care if they put a, a Lombardi in the, in the trophy case. All they care about is the bottom line. I, I really, I, I'd be willing to bet that. I just, I, I think. So paying these guys big money is going to bring in big money? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of questioning that too. Because wondering, are you going to stop? Are you, if they take uh, Trevor Lawrence out, are you going to stop going to the games? Are you saying because it's selling jerseys, it's bringing fans in the stands because you have those, those big name guys on the sideline? Yeah, I mean, because I think it's been proven here in D.C. that no matter what you put out there, people going to show up. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I'm asking. Yeah, I don't. I don't I, know. I, 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 I listen. I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I, I'm definitely not saying you're wrong. You know, I, I mean, I just think that at the end of the day, they're willing to show out money because they know that they're going to double and triple what they're showing out. That's all. That, that, well, that's well, my wife just asked me where that money comes from. I, I said tickets. I figured the ticket sales, the stadium, and what TV money is that? How that works? TV money. 
See, they're trying. We talked about this one too. You have to pay seven hundred dollars to watch every NFL game, a combined. Okay, that's YouTube TV. That's uh, 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 um, Prime. Amazon Prime. Prime. Yeah. That's Netflix. You know, yeah. I, if if you're going to get all that stuff, that's how you're going to get every game. Yeah. You know, like to me, that's just that's just trash. That's trash. And are these guys getting paid all that money on top of that? We think they're getting big money, but are they getting big money compared to what the owners are pocketing? You know, are these guys really just playing a player? Do they want to put a trophy in the trophy case too? So, hey, I don't want to take up any more time. We could talk about that on the LTS exclusive later. But uh, our guys here, let's let's welcome to to the show. The nice. man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Tim <laughs> Worley. Hey. What's up, fellas? Hey, what's up, Mr. Worley? Welcome, what's going welcome. on? Yeah, yeah. Just, just chopping it on? up a little bit before we got you here, okay. my man. Just chopping it up. Hey, look, yeah, I got a message for court. you. Huh? Timmy, I got a message for you right here. Okay. Can you see that? Marion Parker. Marion Parker. Yeah, said, yeah, yeah. Kevin and Marion Parker, great people. Great this, people. Is this is his pastor, my cousin. This is his pastor. And he when I told him we were having you on, Tim, he said, Tim, one of my church members him go way back. They're real good friends. So we had to yes. link up and said, Yeah. Mary yes. said he definitely two, wanted to be on. It's my two cousin. Beautiful people. I've been knowing Kevin since 89 when he when he was a free agent linebacker for the Steelers. Yeah, he's and he's listening. He and his wife are listening tonight. Yeah, he said he yeah, had to be in for this one. Yes, sir. Me, that's yes, sir. With chops is uh, the Reverend, uh, the Reverend Hutcherson. Uh, like to introduce him to you. Okay. Yeah, Go got ahead, a big Rob. church here in Pittsburgh. Oh, I don't know about all that. I just been pastor for the last thirty three years in the city of Pittsburgh. I followed you, Tim, when you played for yeah. the Steelers. Thought you was a great running back. Thought you did. Thank a great you, man. Job. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And Kevin speaks very highly of you. Well, you know, Ke Kevin's my boy, man. Kevin, Kevin, and I go back like stocking calves and waves. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> neither, neither one of us got hair anymore, so. <laughs> yeah, and he wanted to get on, so he's on. And, and you know, I told him if he wanted to say something, that he could type it in and say hello to you. Him okay. and his wife are together. Yeah, two wonderful people, man. Yeah. But uh, hey, uh, yeah, man, I've been on the. I've been on the golf course all day long, and oh, I, was, I like to get you. I like to get you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I tell you, man, eighteen holes, brother, and you know when it's hot, that 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 was that was a little adversity for me today. You yeah. Know? Is it yeah. Was like, it's about to rain up here. Yep. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna let you guys go. Hey, great podcast, you guys, doing a great job. Hill, my day. My paper boy, Young, you guys yes, keep sir. it up. May God bless you and you too, Tim. All right. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. God, God bless, bless you, man. You guys. All right, Rev. All right, Peace. All right. All right. All right, fellas. You know, Jeff, you had to had to. Are you in Florida, Tim? Huh? Are you located in Florida now? Actually, I'm in Georgia. Come oh, okay. Now. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Come that is right. I'm sorry. Hey. Yeah. I'm, I'm a sorry. you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a North Carolina. Boy, you know what? I was raised in North Carolina, but you know Georgia stole me out of the state over forty years ago. So, you know. Now yeah. I have a question because Chops he always drops these southern like uh, quotes and stuff. Do you guys have like a book? He's always throwing like these sayings and acronyms and like you know what was it talking about? I'm drunk as Cooter. Was it drunk as Cooter Brown? Of course. Yeah. I don't know half the stuff you say, man. <laughs> What is it? Bless your heart. Now, bless your heart down here down south can be used anyway. That can yeah. be used in any, <laughs> any way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, there, there's a whole lot. I don't know what you say. Going back like peaches and carrots or something. Peaches <laughs> and herbs. Going back like peaches and herbs. I mean, what? <laughs> I love it. It's that hey, slang, hey, Timmy, what you shoot work? today? Hey, hey listen. Uh, when I first got to Pittsburgh years ago, what was it, 35 years ago, 89? Does that make it 35 years? I the when I when I heard the way that you know the language wasn't there, you know, I, I never heard of a jitney cab. I never heard <laughs> I'll say <laughs> this this chick said, call me a jitney cab. I said, What? Yeah. And, uh, 
And I noticed, I noticed instead of saying y'all, you all is say yins. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's proper English. I don't know what you. That's proper English. I don't, English. I don't, I don't know nothing about that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I listen, man. I love, I love the city of Pittsburgh. I love the people there. Uh, I've probably been back uh, three times this year. I was at training camp for a whole week. Damn, that's more than Bradshaw's season. been back in what forty years. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I get treated well there, man. The Rooney organization, they look out for us, man. And um, I just have a great time when I come back to Pittsburgh. Matter of fact, we I'm coming to the Cowboys you. game. Oh, sweet. Nice. Oh, is yeah. that the alumni weekend? Um, I don't think it is. It it, it could be. I, I, I got to find out. But, you know, that's going to be a big game. Stevens are 2-0 yeah. now. Cowboys and the Steelers, that's a long, long 60-year history. Man. You know what I mean? Super Bowls, playoffs, yeah. and uh, it's going to be played at night. So it's going to be exciting, and it's going to be fireworks. Night. Ready, Freddy. Now, real quick, yeah. Tim, as we get into it, like you said, born and raised in Lumberton, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. What was what was your childhood like growing up? I know you had, what, four or five brothers? Five so, brothers. Okay, so five, what was that like in the house? Like my father was a father strict disciplinarian. Were you and the guys playing all the sports? Were you the youngest, oldest? Hot? Tell us all about that. Okay. Um, where I fell at in line, I was a knee baby. And uh, my baby brother is deceased now. He died mm. in 2004. And so I'm actually the youngest now of the brothers. Sorry to hear that. And I lost an older brother too. So I, I, I lost them actually two years apart. One was 40, Ooh. one was 34 when they died. Aneurysm, wow. heart attack. Jeez, and, wow. um, but we we grew up in um, you know we wasn't a perfect family, but you know dad was there, mom was there. That's they were it. married sixty one years. My dad passed away a year and a half ago. He was eighty five years old, and um, there was order, you know. Yes, it was order. I mean, they wasn't perfect. They didn't always do the right things. They didn't always, you know, like like you know, uh, normal pa parenting. You know, we got our butts whooped. True. Yeah, five, made you better though. Had, made you a better man. Yeah, we had five boys in the house, and you couldn't keep two gallons of milk in the house. We, I mean, we fought all the time. And so my dad, you know, he put that wood to us, and my mom put that strap to us too. So, yes, sir. I know exactly how that is. Exactly. That's the way we all grew up. Everybody on here. Grew Maybe up we should get back to those days because you said they, they didn't need do to, right. Man. We need to. You got too many kids telling their and, parents what to do. And you said they didn't do it right, but maybe it was something that you didn't do right. Well, you know what, though, man? Here's what I <laughs> what learned. What you get into? Here's what I learned, guys. When I had kids, I got a, I got a, uh, I got a son and a daughter. My son's 32. My daughter's 30. My son's six four and a half, six five. He was born in Pittsburgh. Okay, he was born over in in Shady Side. Okay. Uh, and my daughter, my daughter, listen, but here's what I learned when growing, uh, raising them. I learned that to calm down before I would actually punish them. When they did something to make, make me angry or, angry or disappointed, I had, I took time to let it fizzle down and then I would talk to them. And then if they needed a couple of pats on the rear end, that's what I did. But see, I, I had that, I had those kind of, that kind of mother and father they will go berserk on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it worked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kept you in line. Kept you yes, in line. Right. Mm -hmm. Every Absolutely. time my dad raised that strap, he had my complete attention. Who, without question. <laughs> yeah, he did. My dad, hey, my dad was a, he was a, he was a little man. He was no taller than five, nine. He was no more, never weighed more than 175, 180 pounds. And when, you know, me and my brother started towering over him and our voice got deep, my dad told us, well, he said, dynamite come in small packages. I want y'all to I know that's that. right. Yeah. I know <laughs> that's I'm right. Try. Yeah, I, I might have to use that one because I'm about five, <laughs> nothing, <in> 180. Yeah. <laughs> it's bigger than him. My kid's yeah. bigger than you know. It's it's like my son. My son, he towers over me, man. But he 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 know he know dad crazy. Dad is breaking down like a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> double barrel. Double barrel. Yeah, yeah, we got a new hey, one to throw around there. Hey. Hey, we got that old man strength. They don't know nothing Ooh. about that. We don't fight fair. <laughs> Not at all. Put the old 38 jersey back on. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> hey, Timmy, when you was younger, you knew you had the gift. Okay? What do you mean by the gift? How did you know you had the gift? I uh 
some call it the it factor today. I I knew at a very young age that I had that it factor. I I, I knew that once I picked up a football, a basketball, a baseball, once I got on that track, there was nothing that was going to defeat me. I just knew it. I stood out and I pretty much led, you know, that leadership. I had it in me, but I led by action. I didn't talk junk. I didn't do this. I didn't do, I didn't, you know, with, 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 with my mouth, I just, I, I did everything with, 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 with my skill. You know what I mean? Whether it was basketball, football, track and field, but here's, here's something I want to, here's something you guys don't know. Um, and I was talking to some kids about this because there are kids struggle with this and some of them are afraid to say anything. When I was in the second grade guys, don't you know that I had a second or third grade teacher? I'm trying to remember on about three or four different occasions. Uh, this lady called me stupid. Oh, she said, you're a stupid little boy. You know what I mean? And see, that's, yeah. that's right around the time when I discovered that I had an athletic gift. Okay. And, and, and we know words have power and we need to understand that, that, and I'm not trying to preach, but I want to give you guys how Absolutely. things, how we, how we look at life sometimes. And the enemy wants to yoke you at a very young age. And so at a very young age, I believe all the way up until I was 38, 40 years old, that I wasn't smart enough to do some things because somebody said something to me. So what did I do? I pushed all my energy and effort and time and everything and strength into sports. And I said, if you come on this court, on this field, on this track, on this baseball diamond, Tim Worley going to destroy you. I wouldn't even let, listen, nobody ever outran me in practice. I wasn't going to let my kids outrun me. That's how competitive I was. You know what I mean? And so, guys, it, it's it's been, it's you know, you're talking about years ago. And I didn't get over that until like 40 you know, 39, 40, 41 years old, when I began to really believe in myself, when I discovered that I had other gifts to me besides athletic gifts, you know? Wow. And, 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 I, and you know, go ahead. What, what caused the light bulb to go off for you, though? Like, what, boom, what moment, well, what moment I, hit you like that? I believe, I believe, guys, uh, as far as turning it around and discover, discovering other gifts that you have, I believe enemies. I believe mm. your enemies, enemies are necessary. I, I talked about that on Facebook. Your enemies will launch you into your next level. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I say that because, you know, uh, you know, when I read, when I read about the good Lord Jesus, you know, Judas helped launch Jesus into his net, into his destiny. And you will learn that your enemies know more about you and know who you are more than your friends do. <sighs> Let your because they be are motivated. afraid of you. They can see what's in you, and they don't want you to meet, meet meet that, right? They don't want you to be that, you know? There are a lot of people in your lives, man, they they benefit off your sickness. But when you get well, you have no use for them. That's what they know. So they want to see you sick. They, they want to see you can rise, but don't rise past them. Right. I'm preaching. Yes, <laughs> You're good, though. Yes, good. Amen. Amen. Like, Hey, you, I, I, you ended up at uh, UGA. What other schools did you consider? Oh man, who's on your hardest? Who who gave you the you most know? money? <laughs> <laughs> okay, can, 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 since we got the NIL, can we talk about it now? <laughs> Reparation. Here you go. Hey, give me some. Listen, listen. They need to go back. They need to go back and give us. <laughs> Give us look at here, you guys. Y'all went through a rough time. We need to give y'all some of this too. You know what I mean? <laughs> but but no, man. I uh uh I got recruited very heavily, and 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 I'll tell you. And and if there's any young people out there listening, athletes, I got recruited in football. But what made football, what made me get recruited harder, was the fact that I was a track athlete too. Was the mm. fact that I played basketball too. Was the fact that I was a baseball player too. You know what I mean? But track got really got me noticed just as much as football. Okay. You know, Clemson University, when I was a freshman, you know, they recruited me. Georgia Tech, when I was a freshman, they saw me running track. And then they found out I was this big kid back there toting that mail. You know what I mean? And it was like, okay, well, we need, we need to take a look at this guy, you know? But 
I was recruited by nationwide, by just about every every uh, Division One college, and uh, even some smaller colleges. But but uh, uh, I narrowed it down, guys, to uh, uh, in this order: Oklahoma was first, Clemson was second, Florida State was third, Georgia was fourth on my list, Tennessee was fifth. You know, back then, and I don't know if it's still that way, you got five uh, official visits that you would take. And I took them to those schools. I was headed to Oklahoma until my mama met Barry Switzer. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. He said, uh-uh, I can't let can you, you go talk, there can, can you talk on it? Can you elaborate? Oh, yeah, got I can elaborate on it. But all listen. means, got to. All right, now listen, here, here's the deal, right? Back in the day, it was it was, it was was a mystery to everything. So it was it was a mystery, and it was real cool and 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 to see coaches in your neighborhood standing standing outside your house riding in them big lincoln town cars in your neighborhood you know what i mean and yep. so one night i set it up where i was seeing like uh every other night i would see two to uh, two to three no more than three universities at a time and they each had 30 minutes okay on this night i was seeing oklahoma clemson and florida state Oklahoma was first, came in, presented Oklahoma, Barry Switzer. You talk about a salesman, bro. Goodness gracious. He could sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in an all-white dress. You know what I mean? And there it is. Dude, it, listen, <laughs> he was selling Oklahoma, bro. He had me. He had my dad talking about this. Yes, we're going to make him the best Heisman Trophy winner. He's going to be a first round. We're going to put him back in the eye formation, just like we did Marcus Dupree, get him out of that beard, Jamel Holloway, and this and that. And I'm like, and I'm like, woo, inside, guys. I'm like, woo, I'm going to be a student. I'm going to know him. And all of a sudden, when he finished, the assistant coach started talking, Jim Donnan. Now, I'm seeking y'all put this together. Jim Donnan ended up becoming Georgia's head coach in the late 90s, all right? Jim Donnan was Oklahoma's uh, offensive coordinator around that time, okay? And it's right around the time when Troy Aikman had transferred to UCLA, me and Jamel Holloway were the two top recruits coming in that year, okay? But when 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 Jim Donnan took over the presentation, Barry switched across his legs, had on some snakeskin boots. My mom had a glass coffee table. He started tapping her coffee table <laughs> with the tip of his boots. Oh, oh yeah. no, 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 no. Hey, man, the atmosphere changed drastically. I said, oh, Lord, this ain't going to end good. No. My grandma <laughs> had one of them glass coffee tables. You did not touch that thing. No, man. And so and so, when they finished up, I knew I could just see the look on her face. And and before we let Clemson come in, my mother turned around and she said, uh, you, like, you really like Oklahoma University? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, "That's is that where you want to go? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, I'm sorry to tell you, son. I'm not letting you go out there. That man's disrespectful. That man's That's disrespectful. It. And that was and it. Then, yeah. And, and, and then, you know, get skipped past all the other schools. In the final analysis, you know, I ended up, if you go back and, and look at the articles, I ended up signing. I was a five-star. I was a number three running back in the nation. OK, it was uh, the kid from Aliquippa. I forget his name. He ended up going to Pitt and he got hurt. Uh, Brian something. Brian Davis. Brian Davis. Yep. He went to wash. Yep. He went to wash hat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he was Washington. number one. Aaron Emanuel and Sammy Smith was number two. They had me number three in the nation. And they had a guy that ran with me at Georgia named Keith Henderson. He was number five. Well, you had yeah, Sam, Sammy Smith, too. Yeah. Yeah. I said Sammy Smith. Yep. Yeah. And, and and so, uh, man, all of a sudden I go to sign. I, it was it was time to sign. Jim Donnan had flew back in town to try to convince me to come to Oklahoma, and we sat down and talked for a couple of hours. And fellas, this is what this man said to me, not knowing that he was going to eventually be the head coach at the University of Georgia. This man said, "Tim, we know you're not going to be a Sooner, and we know the schools that you're looking at." If I could make a suggestion for you and you take my advice, I believe you'll be successful. He said the best fit for you, your style, your speed, your size, he said, would be the University of Georgia. Wow. And I said, why, coach? He said, because you could be the next Herschel Walker or even better. And when he said that, I said, OK, OK. And by the end of the day, I called Coach Dooley and got him on the phone. Look, I'm ready to sign. Man. And I became a bulldog, man. Wow. That's awesome. Shane, ask him. 
Fat, go ahead. Let's go back. Go ahead. No, I'm good. Go ahead. Hey, I wanted to know who you think are the top five running backs out of Georgia. Uh, well, Tim Worley, number one. Uh, <laughs> listen, listen, let me see. Now, now I got to look at, um, it's one thing to just look at the pure raw talent, but also the stats. Now, you guys must remember, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I only played two years at Georgia. Yeah. I played two full seasons. That was it. And came, and came out, I played my freshman year. I played three games into my sophomore year, blasted my knee, tore every ligament in, on the inside of my knee. I missed football for two full years. Mm. Came back in 1988 and prayed All-American, SEC Offensive Player of the Year, led the conference in, and became a first-round pick for the Steelers. Okay? Now, and I'm not, and, and I'm and I'm saying that because that was a short career. All right. But when you talk about just pure raw talent, now. I got to put Herschel up there because Herschel carried the load. And I believe not just myself, but even the other running backs, Hersh, Gurley, Chubb, all, if any of us guys could have carried the load like Herschel did, we could have did the same thing. Right. Okay. Right. And because I saw a game one time, and I ain't taking nothing away from Herschel. Herschel, bad boy. I saw a game against Florida. Herschel carried the freaking ball 52 times. Mm. Wow. My highest carry at Georgia was 28 times. Wow. Man. 28 yeah, times. Did he really but, not ever lift a weight? Herschel? Yeah. Um, I don't believe that. I think, I think, I think he was the king of uh push-ups and all that stuff. When he first came to uh Georgia, he wasn't really messing with weights. I think he got into the weight lifting a little later. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, but uh, Herschel, man, Herschel, Her Herschel's a freak of nature, man. I played. Listen, I played against this dude. Now Herschel, you know, he's a little bit older than me. I played against Herschel when I was with the Bears, right in '94. We played played him in a preseason game, and Herschel was the spy guy on 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 the Eagles punt team, right? And I'm he's my guy. I'm holding. I'm sp playing a lot of special teams, man. Herschel took off, bro. I had, I had to tell you, man, he almost made me pull a hamstring trying to keep up with him. <laughs> you know, the dude's fast, man. Hey, uh, we appreciate having you on here, the OSP. My, you know, we're all from the Pittsburgh area. We were super excited having you at number, number 38. Uh, what was that draft experience like for you coming to uh, Pittsburgh? And did you have uh, other looks, other teams wanted you? Yeah, of course. I, there was uh, that process, guys, and, and a lot of people don't know this. That whole process back then, it was like, you know, dinosaur ancient process because back in 1989, you know, I came out as a redshirt junior. You know, I had one more year at Georgia, but I decided to come out because I was a guaranteed top 10 in the first. And plus, I had that major knee surgery that I recovered from. I didn't want to take that chance again. And, and, but back then, Juniors could not go to the combine. Okay. So the only three juniors that came out in the 1989 draft was me, Barry Sanders, and my running mate, Keith Henderson. Okay. Henderson got drafted to the 49ers as a fullback in the third round. All right. So back then it was 28 teams. So I had all 28 teams come to Athens one day in March and they worked me out. Okay. And once they work you out, there are the teams that want to talk to you. So there was about maybe six or seven, maybe eight teams that wanted to say something, you know, no more than five or 10 minutes after the workout, right? First team that pulled me in was the Detroit Lions. And people don't know this, guys, but you, you heard it from me. Detroit Lions coach, they said, they said, hey, Tim, listen, we're, we're interested, but we run the, the run and shoot. Barry is our guy. But he hasn't declared himself eligible for the draft yet. If he does not declare himself eligible for the draft, we're gonna take you in the third pick. That's what they told me. You know, you know, you know you guys what I said. Same year. I didn't realize that. Okay. You know what I said at the time on the inside? Uh, no, you ain't. That's <laughs> 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 just kidding, man. Kidding. <laughs> hey, but, 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 but listen, listen. But you had Detroit. Green Bay, 
Atlanta, San Diego was very interested. I think there was a whole trade, something going on with Mike Merriweather with the Chargers and the Vikings and all that stuff. But uh, uh, and there was one more team that was interested, and um, uh, and of course the Steelers. And guys, I found out. I found out that uh, the night before I was actually getting drafted, I found out that the Steelers was probably going to draft me with seven pick. Mm, wow. 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 But you know I mean, what? Steelers is my favorite team since I was nine years old. So that was a dream come true. Yeah. Now, and, and real quick, and I wanted to get into that, but we are not. I hate it. I hate it. Things changed up on us. We are pressed for time. So if you can real quick, before we get out of here, Tim, in like two minutes or so, if you could tell mm -hmm. me, because we're friends on you know social media, and your faith is strong. Your walk is strong. Yes, your sir. walk is strong. Can you tell us how your relationship with God and your in your in your beliefs, how has that shaped the man you are today? Okay, in, 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 I, I, I tell you what, it, it it all began, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible. While I was blind, fellas, now I can see. You know why? Because Tim Worley got to a point where he got tired of Tim Worley. Tim Worley didn't know who Tim Worley was for a long time. That guy that was running the ball for the Steelers and had the curly hair and 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 driving the fancy cars and the taking the girls, you know that, that guy that was getting in trouble, failing drug tests. Do you, you know, I didn't know who that guy was. I don't have a clue who that guy is today, because that guy was trying to kill me, you know. Yeah. And so, I, and and it wasn't. And, and it's amazing how adversity, adversity when you take it on and you humble yourself in the process, how that adversity can build you. It can make you stronger. And I got to a point, guys, when it was all over for me, when the cheering stopped for me, Tim Moore didn't know what to do with himself. And you know what I mean? I went through yeah, many yeah. a years of, of, of depression. And the only thing I had was my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? And he's the only one that proved his love for me. He did it for me 2,000 years ago, and he's steady doing it every day. And he pulled yeah. me up out of the gutter. He got me to a point, but I, I had to do something first because the Bible says preparation of the heart belongs to man, but the answer is from the Lord. So I had to humble myself and call on the name Jesus, and he heard me and lifted me up. And when I humbled myself, he came in and began to show me who I was in him because I thought all I was was an athlete. And you remember, guys, when I was in the second grade, I locked myself into that. And when it was time to break away from that, I didn't know how to you break out how. of it. You know how. Okay? Yeah. And so yeah. that's why I, I – listen, and what it boils down to, guys, the whole time that I was an athlete, because that was a cover-up for me, okay, I had a fear of success of my own success because I knew my potential. I dummied myself down because I didn't want to be that leader because I was afraid. The Steelers wanted me to be part of like some of the, the you know the spokesperson, one of the guys that's a spokesperson on the team for the community, the communities in Pittsburgh. Guess what? I tried to teach the Steelers not to expect too much of me off the field. Yeah. Because I was afraid, guys. I was afraid of my own success. Mm. Man. You know? And when you yeah. and see with great gifts come great responsibility, I didn't want it. I was afraid. Mm. Because of what somebody said to me when I was eight years old. That's terrible. Man, wow. that's mm -hmm. right. It's motivational, but it's still terrible to tell a child that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's still but, it's still terrible. I, yeah. And just, we live and we learn. I learned from and and I'm listen, I'm steady learning stuff, man. I'm showing, I'm just, you know, I, I look at everything as an opportunity to be better. I'm looking every I'm a, I'm a I'm a answer to problems. That's how mm. I, I'm a problem solver. That's how I look at things. That's good. You know. Wow. Yeah, because I'm a humble person, and when you look back, the way I used to live, you know, addiction is selfish. That's one of the most selfish things on the planet. And I look back, I was very selfish, very selfish, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I had to humble myself. God humbled me, and I found out later on that I always belonged to Him. He had His hands on me the whole time. That's why I'm still here. I should have been dead a long time ago. Hey, Kevin, Kevin know how I used to get out. Kevin know, Kevin know how I used to ride the motorcycles through the three streets of Pittsburgh on one wheel. Come on, somebody. You know what I mean? Man. Yeah. Man. yeah. And I'm still here. And now that I'm here, man, I know who I am. You know, I thought I was living back then, fellas, when I had all the, the things. No, yeah. I didn't start living until I 
denied myself, picked up my cross and walked with it and started helping other people. I help up, I help people every single day. Yeah. Every single day. Every day you're going to see me get up. You're going to see me reach out on social media. You're going to see me do ministry. You're going to see me encourage people. Why? Because when you've been forgiven much, brothers, you love much. And I love people. And I want to see everybody, you guys, I want to see everybody at their best. That's what scares me. Yeah, that's deep. That's deep. Amen. Hey, do I have to go I'm to preaching. church on Sunday? Because that was beautiful, man. Yeah, that was awesome. Thing. Hey, Thank you. Last Jeff. question for you from from Miss Parker. She wants to know what you think of the Steelers quarterback situation currently. Do you keep riding well, with Fields, or do you jump over to Russ when he's ready? I'm gonna stick with Fields, man. Fields is getting. Listen, he he's in a rhythm right now. It ain't what the people want, but he's getting better. And he's getting better. Fields for the first time has somebody that believes in him. Yeah. Tomlin believes in him. Okay. Scott he, out yeah, earlier. He, yeah. He feels right at home. They should let him continue because all he's going to do is get better. Yeah. He It kind of reminds me of Michael Vick. You know, Michael Vick, you know, his whole, just about his whole career, he didn't know how to read defenses. He was just out there balling. Yeah. But feels, feels, I'm not saying he don't know how to read defenses and stuff. He's going to get better and better because his athletic ability is through the roof. Yeah. And if he get to that point where he's, you know, can balance out the passing and the running, you know, like he did at Ohio State, man, I'm yep. telling you, this dude is a force. But yeah. I've got to keep Fields on the field right now because he's got the hot hand. Yeah. Appreciate Tim, it. real quick, there's a lot of stuff we wanted to get into tonight, but we couldn't because we were pressed for time. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I do not want to put you on the spot, but we definitely want to have you back. So I know I can't okay, get it. Put date, me on the spot, bro. I don't mind. Definitely, definitely want to have you back, man. We yes. definitely want to get you back. Put me on the spot. I don't mind. I ain't got nothing to hide, bro. I, I, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like this. I ate mile, folk. Yeah, that's me. I did it. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. I sure did. I, I would. So I can't ask you to commit when you come back, but we definitely want to have you back later during this Steeler season to see how yes. they panned out, to see what they, you know what I mean, and get more into your story at Georgia and okay. the league. You know what made 100%. you the man that you are. Brothers, hey, anytime y'all want me to come back on, just give me a hollow man and I'm there. Hey, Miss Berrien just said, um, she, you know, Kevin wants to know how your brother, he loves you and wants to know how your brother's, about your brother, how your brother is, I guess. Brothers are doing good. Everybody's doing good, man. Um, things are, things are uh, great. And uh, hey, man, tell Kevin and tell Miss Marion I love them and I'm, I'm always praying for them and Hopefully I get to see them sometime again, maybe this year, uh, but nothing but love, nothing but love. Timmy, we appreciate you. We definitely want to get you back on the show during the season. Thank you so much for making time in your day. And I hope you played well for 18. Cause I know if I was out hitting 18, it wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> I think, I, I think <laughs> I shot about a 91. <laughs> That's not too hey, bad. I, did too. I, I just yeah. shot that too on the front yeah. line. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks man. Hey, All thanks right, guys. God bless, man. You. Yes, yes sir. sir. God bless. Thank you for everything, Tim. Yes, sir. Fellas, we definitely got to get him back on. Absolutely. Oh, I, I know that. I know he had a lot more to tell us, and I really yes. wanted to hear what he had to say. Um, I especially want to dip into his thoughts on on things like the Steelers and what's going on in Georgia. I know you put out there about a lot of yeah. the other stuff aside from football that goes on there, but. Uh, you know, I'm going to wrap this up for us because we got to move on to show two. Um, just wrapping it up, you can find all of us on any social media you want to go to. Racine Hill, Terry Young, Michael Gregory Mills, and Mark Meriday. You can find us at Original Sports Podcast with Mark Meriday, OSP with Eminem. And we'd love to hear what you have to say. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thanks to everybody who helps put our show together. Uh, voice intro, everything. And uh, don't forget to catch us next week to experience EO on the original sports podcast. <laughs> <laughs>